Watch out! Watch out! UMass are national champions! What are some of the emotions that you've gone through these past three weeks? The biggest feeling is pride. And pride in what we've done, what we've accomplished, understanding what it took. It was a lot of hard work. Uh, you know, the, the turnaround of the program, it doesn't happen by chance. Losing the game wasn't acceptable. And if that's your mindset, then there's no reason why you shouldn't win the whole thing. So I think when we won the whole thing, we were like, yeah, we, we, we haven't lost a game since January. Like, we don't, we're not supposed to lose. And that's pretty powerful when you can get to that, that mindset. You went through a two week shutdown like everyone on campus did on February 7th. What was special, what made your culture help you guys get through that stretch? The shutdown to me was more, it allowed us to refresh. And it allowed us to feel that fear of not being able to play on. And we came out of that, that shutdown we beat Providence eight to one on the road. And it was the same feeling that I felt the morning of the championship game. The kids were just ready to play. So the shutdown to me came at a good time. We've been practicing for six months or seven months, however long it was. But there were many other times throughout the year that, that the strength of our culture uh, was evident. And to me, it was the consistency all year long. We brought the same thing every game. And I think that's the strongest description of your culture is how consistent you can be at a high standard. Was there a message? If there was, what was it before the Duluth game and then before the championship game? The message between Duluth, before Duluth, was to believe that we've grown as a program in the two years since, since we've played them. At times, they were the dominant team. At times, we were the dominant team but it was much different than two years prior when they, they really controlled the tempo of the game. The message before the, the St. Cloud State was, you know, you've earned this, earn it one more time. Was there a moment that you think, that you can think of in that Minnesota Duluth game where that's when we changed the course of this game? The, the biggest goal of the entire season was Anthony and Delgaizo's tying goal in the third period. Trevino in front. Trevino again tries to bank it in. It's sitting there. Shalapina safe. Rebound. Score! It's bigger than the overtime goal. Bigger than, than any other goal. Duluth was playing well and we were, I don't want to say frustrated, but we were struggling to create offense. And we scored that goal the way we scored most of our goals is we won battles around the net. And we, and we scored on the back post. Once that goal was scored, I felt the ice started to tilt our way and then into overtime. I've never experienced anything as dominant as that in hockey. Trevino trying to spin away from rail. Trevino wrap around in front, score! Over UMass to the title game for the second tournament in a row. So the Delgaisos can fight over who's had the biggest goal in UMass program history. Tell me what they, that family, those guys have, have meant to the, the success of this program. It's pretty clear to me that our senior class changed the culture of this program with their Con how they conducted themselves away from the ring. But our junior class absolutely changed this program and how hard we compete. From the Delgaiso brothers, Colin Felix, Bobby Trevino, those kids are the heartbeat of our team on the ice. That's why Anthony and, and Mark have scored two of the biggest goals in the, the program's history. Bobby Trevino set up all the big goals. They are really competitive kids who you don't want to play against. And that, that whole junior class, they've been so instrumental in, in what we've done. They, they've been here three years, they've played in two national championship games, and they may have played in a third if we didn't get shut down by the pandemic. And I, I, I 
give all that credit to how hard they compete. For UMass Gives, you know, this has obviously been a team effort from the whole university to, to, to get to this point. How have donations from alumni and fans positively impacted things that you do for the hockey team on a day-to-day -day basis? Fortunately, I've had that, that financial support to uh, a new weight room, new video room, you know, that we're having a new uh, locker room coming now. These things are necessary. Like, our kids conduct themselves first class in everything they do. They deserve to have first class resources. We wouldn't have been able to do what we've done without significant financial support. And, and that doesn't just mean one time big donations, it's all the little donations. You know, to me that's an important part of a program is to build that alumni base, not just the former players, but former UMass uh, students. And we've always wanted to build a program that everybody could be proud of, that, that you could cheer for, that you could say, hey, that's my team, that's my school. And, um, but you can't do it without, without financial support. Hope it feels good to send money to the hockey program because you feel like you're getting your money's worth. Tell me about the locker room. Do you have things that you're excited about, like in particular with the design? And uh, you know, how is that specifically gonna help you guys grow? I'm excited it's gonna be cutting edge uh, as far as technology in the room, what we're able to do on the board with the team. I'm excited that it has a nutrition center that we didn't have before. It has a recovery center that we didn't have before. It's gonna allow our guys to, you know, after games, eat inside the locker room. We used to go out in the hall and put up tables, and it's just, um, it's the proper thing to do. It's all gonna be first class. I've seen a number of, of the top programs, uh, facilities, and I think this is gonna to be top, right at the top. So I'm, I'm excited, I'm excited for our kids, excited for, for our alumni, uh, I'm excited to, to tour people through. It's, it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be NHL level. And that's what we try to do here. We try to do everything at, at the highest level, and uh, it was the one, it was the last thing we needed to address, and uh, it's happening right now. You mentioned the donors, no matter the size, very important. You've got a group of committed supporters in the Pond Club. Why should somebody join the Pond Club? I think the alumni support is, is huge, but also the local community. And that's where the Pond Club gives you that avenue. It allows you to, you know, say, hey, put your mark in it. Hey, I'm in it. I'm on the wagon. I want to see that membership get to big, huge numbers. And I think, again, it's just another level of a successful hockey program. You have to have success on the ice, success in the classroom, but you have to have a big number of, of people who are saying, yeah, I want to I want to be part of it. And the Pond Club provides that. Yeah.